Well, they can't sleep, they can barely hear each other talk and their kids can't play outside. These families are going loco over screeching trains on their doorstep. It's not just annoying, it's hell. And they say a blunder by bureaucrats is to blame. Nails down a chalkboard, that kind of noise. Constantly, constantly, constantly. The screeching is absolutely deafening. And it happens every few minutes, day and night. I'm awake all night long with the sound of the screeching. Caulfield East, a leafy suburb not far from Melbourne's CBD. We feel it's unlivable. At Jenny's place, there's no escaping it. All you can hear is rumble, you know, rumble, and the screech of the wheels. It's hard because my child has autism. Lockie can't bear the noise. It just says, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, and I can't do that. Yeah. Shaking of your house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's unreal. Shaking. It's sending her neighbours off the rails too. We used to be able to have summers with our front door open and now we have to close it and it's almost unbearable sitting on the back deck. Moya says she's going mad. I had people over on Friday night and it was literally embarrassing. We, could, we had to stop talking. Uh, we put our hands over our ears. Well, you worry about the safety. <laughs> It's now no longer safe for my young kids to ride their bikes on the street because when I'm out there watching them, once a train's passed, the, the screeching's so loud that if a car's coming and I want to alert them, they can't hear me. It stems from the removal of a nearby level crossing. Residents claim bureaucrats told them 400 metres of old track that wasn't meeting safety standards would be replaced as part of the level crossing removal. But that never happened. For the record, the government denies the track isn't compliant. Maybe so, but try telling that to these angry families. All we're asking for is that they deliver on what they said they were. And don't get them started on this, all the greenery that was raised by the work trucks. This was meant to be trees and revegetation, but like everything else, they're just going to walk away from this project and not deliver. The last thing we want is the government to actually make people's lives a living hell. Local MP David Southwick, Victoria's Shadow Minister for Transport Infrastructure. If this was a building site, you'd be straight back to the builder and make them make good. I mean, most builders wouldn't be able to get away with what the government gets away with. We bought on a railway line. There's always been noise here, OK? We're not complaining about the noise. We stood out, I stood in this spot and bought my house across the road on an auction day with trains going in the background. If they were like they were today, I wouldn't have put my hand up. When we first moved in here, we really didn't notice it at all. And we wouldn't have moved in here because we did come and stand around on the weekends to see what, the, what it was like. Some residents are now considering a one-way ticket out of here unless the government hops on board to help. The government needs to listen to us because we're actually losing our minds here with lack of sleep. Look at me. Do I look like I've had a good night's sleep? <laughs> no. Victoria's Level Crossing removal project told us... All infrastructure built on our program is compliant with Australian standards and we will continue to work with Metro Trains Melbourne to reduce noise levels on the track at Caulfield East. Victoria's Department of Transport says... Lubrication of the track was increased and a new track lubricator was installed to reduce noise along this section of track. We would get concerned if the, if the maximum noise level went above 85 decibels. We called in William Delmo from Acoustic Compliance Australia to test the sound levels a day after that extra lubrication. Today we've got levels between uh, about 65 to 75 decibels, uh, which is pretty typical for train noise when, you, when, it, when the train track is this close to, the, to the, um, the houses. Seems the lubrication fix may have worked, but how long will it last before the Screeching Express is back? Noise would send anyone mad, wouldn't it?